we have a problem if moms are feeling like that all it is is survival mode. Just embrace the suck until your kids are 10, 12, and you might have a morning to yourself, right? That just didn't resonate with me, and it wasn't something that I was willing to participate in or accept for myself. And so I kind of drew a hard line in the sand about that and have been trying every day, you know, I have my my moments to really be the type of woman that I want to be and have that trickle over into how I approach motherhood. Welcome to the Worthy Mother Podcast, where we discuss all things identity, self-compassion, and fulfillment within and beyond motherhood. I'm Emily Rose Hardy, a mindset and self-love coach for moms. I am a firm believer that to be able to take care of our children, we must take care of ourselves first. This is not a parenting podcast. No, this is a podcast where we will challenge the societal expectations of what it means to be a mom, demystify the perfect mom myth, and learn to love ourselves. You are worthy, mama. Let's do this. Hey, welcome to the Worthy Mother Podcast. We are a few weeks into 2024, and I shared my intention for this new year on Instagram and in my newsletter earlier this month. I've been setting a word of intention for the last few years just to really help guide how I navigate life and how I make decisions on really how to spend my time and what I'm putting energy towards. And this year, my word of intention is fun. And I'm sure there are others of you out there who can relate to this, but honestly, I've never really had an easy time having fun. While I definitely did have fun as a kid, like that was part of my childhood, I was pretty anxious and I spent a lot of times kind of worrying about things, making sure everything was safe, staying out of trouble and all of that. I was very much a people pleaser and a lot of those patterns definitely followed me into adulthood. And I've come to realize lately that I have a hard time truly having fun in a lot of situations. So that is something that I really intentionally want to work on, especially now that I have kids and, you know, I want to be enjoying life and having fun. So today we are going to be talking all about having fun in motherhood. I have the best guest joining us for this conversation, (laughs) the mama behind the podcast, Moms Have More Fun, Ruthie Silver. Ruthie empowers moms to embrace a lighter, more joyful version of mom life. And with her belief that motherhood is not a survival mode sentence, she inspires moms to confidently step into their mom area. So Ruthie, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the podcast. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm so glad to hear that your word of the year is fun. I fully believe that that is going to manifest for you and it's going to be your most fun year ever. So I am a mom of two young boys. My oldest just turned five a few days ago. And my youngest son, uh, you know, he's landing between two and a half years and three years. He'll be three at the end of April. So however many months that is. (laughs) Stop counting the months, right? Um, And I live in the mountains of Vermont in a log cabin with my husband, who is an officer in the army. I never pictured myself a mountain mama, but here I am. And I work full-time in the health and fitness industry and have a twist on that in the marketing sector. Now I used to be a full-time personal trainer, nutrition coach, but now I work in the communications role for that company. So I'm a busy mom. I am an IVF mom. I used IVF to conceive my two boys. Getting pregnant wasn't easy, but being pregnant I loved. And so, yeah, just rocking and rolling over here. I love it. And Your boys, I have two boys as well, a five-year-old and an almost three-year-old. So we're like right in that same same zone of motherhood. I feel Right in that pocket. Yes. It is so much fun and so much. It is so much. Yes. So much. So much all the things. It sure is. All the things. All the feelings, (laughs) which it's great. Um, Yes. Your brand and your podcast is called Moms Have More Fun, which what a statement. (laughs) So obviously you have some thoughts on the relationship between motherhood and fun. Can you give us your perspective on motherhood and fun kind of in a nutshell, what that means to you? Sure. So, you know, once I kind of made it through like that newborn phase, that postpartum phase where it's so consuming, 
right? And you don't really have your head on straight for those first few months, sometimes, you know, up to a year or whatever. It's it's very personal. Once I started to kind of come out of that haze a little bit and really pay attention to how I wanted to feel as a mom and the messages I was getting about motherhood from social media, from other moms, from mom groups, I was like, whoa, 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 stop the press. What is going on here? It seemed like mothers were being excluded and almost excluding themselves in a way from the joy, the pleasure, the fun that is what I believe like a a God-given right. I mean, why are mothers being excluded from that? And so I really was seeing all these kind of hot mess mom jokes and content on social media, and I simply didn't think it was funny. I really didn't think it was funny. I thought, hey, we have a problem if moms are feeling like that all it is is survival mode. Just embrace the suck until your kids are 10, 12, and you might have a morning to yourself, right? That just didn't resonate with me, and it wasn't something that I was willing to participate in or accept for myself. And so I kind of drew a hard line in the sand about that and have been trying every day, you know, I have my my moments to really be the type of woman that I want to be and have that trickle over into how I approach motherhood. And fun to me is a life value. I want to have a good time here. I want to have a good time when the days, the moments that I'm given, I want to soak it up. I want to live it up. And I want to be the kind of mom where my kids look at me and they they think about me smiling. They think about me bringing a positive energy into the home. They think about me looking at the world with some sense of wonder and magic and being delighted about things. And so that's really important to me. And I want to show the world that moms can be whole people and moms can have a boatload of fun. I'd be remiss to say that I come from a very, a a past that's, you know, a dark past. I went through a very traumatic event when I was 19 that, um, I, I was a near death experience, a very violent experience and assault. And from that experience, I felt I have two paths, right? I can let this define me and I can turn in a very dark way, or I can choose that I'm going to have agency over what I do from here. And so I know that not every person, thank God, has that experience that gives that perspective, that perspective that nobody wants to get that way, but I'm glad that I have. And so I do think that's part of it because I refuse to uh, let my life go by and feel that I am a victim to my circumstances, motherhood included. So I do just want to note that, that I didn't just magically, you know, start having a blast all of the time, nor do I. I just think that that's important to to really kind of bring some life and perspective to my experience. Yeah, I think it's a good representation of how it is a choice. Like it's a choice we make yeah. to embrace the fun to enjoy mm-hmm. the things and how that can be challenging especially if you yeah. feel like you're just kind of going through the motions and mm-hmm. things get hard I mean motherhood is hard life is hard yep and we all have the choice and like that's something I'm so aware of right now is like I have the choice to say yes to the things that are fun and to enjoy the things that I'm already doing and so I just yeah. I think your story like really highlights that choice, right? We all have the choice. Yeah, I I completely agree. For me, it's a choice that I make every day. And sometimes <laughs> it's moment to moment. And sometimes you feel like you're hanging on by a thread. And I don't mean to say that every mo- you know moment you have to be doing cartwheels over, right? <laughs> but uh, what's your energy? What's your aura? Yeah. What's your value system about motherhood? And how do you want to feel as you move throughout your day? And how do you want to feel as you move throughout motherhood. For me, I think that motherhood is such a sacred role that, you know, very fitting. I think mothers are worthy of having fun, you know, and mm-hmm. and, and enjoying it. So that's what I try and do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. It's, we really are worthy of it. Like it's, there's so much in there, so much that you said, and we'll get into talking about kind of the social narratives that yeah. are out there. Just thinking of like my own experience, that fun has not necessarily been at the forefront of my motherhood experience. Like Mm -hmm. honestly, just adulthood in general. Yeah. Yes. There's been a lot of fun in it, but it's not necessarily like something that comes 
naturally to me to yeah. just like enjoy and have fun. And I'm sure that there yeah. are a lot of moms who can relate to that. Mm-hmm. Maybe they had similar like childhoods as me where they were kind of the worry yes. wart people pleaser. And I think mm-hmm. that's something a lot of women can relate to. So what do you see as contributing to fun? Not only not being a priority for so many moms, but also feeling so far away for some. Um, first, I want to just acknowledge you for being self-aware and and recognizing kind of how you're programmed personally Mm -hmm. and that fun is something that you have to work for. (laughs) You know, it doesn't come naturally, but it's so great that you're prioritizing it. I think that as moms, modern day moms, we're kind of sold this false bill of goods that tells us that we should like resign to survival mode and not expect more. And that worry and burnout and overwhelm is sort of the status quo, like the normal operating mode. And I think a lot of moms that I talk to and that I see will advocate for their own unhappiness. So they'll see me smiling. They'll say something like, oh God, toddlers, am I right? Like, oh God, like, and complain. And, And I'll say, Like, oh, you know, I just, I'm not available for that. Not to say I don't have good friends and I can't be compassionate and I don't understand because I certainly do, but to get down in the trenches, I'm not available for. And I think that many moms, mainstream culture has taught us that being in the trenches is just what motherhood is about. And so we have to have that light bulb moment and we have to have that self-agency to say that doesn't have to be the way it is, you know, but I do think it feels so out of reach. For some reason, it seems that motherhood is the exception to advocating for ourselves, for expecting happiness, for expecting respect and expecting fulfillment. So like, think about when you're growing up and you're, you're like dating, right? And your parents and all your friends, if he doesn't treat you well, then you just, you know, he doesn't deserve you. If you're in a toxic work environment, if they don't see your worth, then, you know, get out of there and find a new gig, someone who appreciates you. You can be whatever you want to be. You know, you can be single and loving it. You can be a a doctor. You can be this, but a happy mom? What? Right? If you think about your interactions and how many moms you talk to, how many moms are just gushing over it? How many moms are just like, I'm in love with my day-to-day, like so fulfilled. I feel so in alignment. I feel like this abundance, this peace, this ease, this, you know, romantic feeling about my life. It's like an anomaly, right? And so I think that our culture is one that has kind of set the standard really low Mm -hmm. for how mothers should feel themselves and how mothers should be treated in their households. So it's a it's a bigger problem. Yeah. Than just like waking up and like feeling like you've lost yourself and things like that. I think it's a societal standard that has kind of been set. Totally. I think there's so many messages we get that we just take in not even knowing. And it it informs mm-hmm. like how we wake up and live our day to day and how we feel in that. It's really interesting the way you said that, like moms being the exception. And I I think about this a lot with a lot of the issues we face that are more societal based on societal narratives and just Mm -hmm. how interesting it is. Like there's a lot of moms out there, right? Like it's not just some small sector (laughs) of people. Like it's a a big thing Mm -hmm. and how interesting it is that these narratives can kind of stop us in our track, stop us from like moving on in life with the rest of our story being as this whole complete person. And that's something that's, really important that we talk about and change because it's not Mm -hmm. necessary. It's not necessary to say, oh, you're a mom now. Your life is over to all the moms out there, right? That's just absurd, but it really is kind of. You're a mom now, like normalize the suck. Yeah. You're a mom now. Maybe you'll get a good night's sleep, you know, when they're 18, but oh, wait, no, because you're going to be worrying (laughs) about them. You're a mom now. Maybe you'll get a second to yourself when you like go pee. You're a mom now, like get out your mom bun and sweatpants, you know, like it's just, it's everywhere. And it's, I think a lot of moms, myself included, sometimes it's just in our psyche and we don't even realize it. Totally. Totally. Like having fun seems out of reach because sometimes it's more like, just how do I get through this hour? Yeah. Oh, totally. Fun. Like what? I'm just trying to survive the day here. 
you know? And sometimes I think because there are moments where that is the reality. There are a lot of moments where that's the reality. And so it can be really hard to shift out of that mindset of this being the reality Mm. of my life rather than this being the reality of this two hour moment. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think that like the more you value your own worth as a mom and the Mm -hmm. more you have respect for that role and the more you have a desire to kind of grab life by the horns and live, be the person you want to be, the easier those moments become. Because you're like, this is just laundry. Like, uh, my vibration is so high. I'm not going to let a load of laundry like bring me down. My vibration is so high that I'm not going to let a toddler tantrum like put me up to take me to the edge. My vibration is so high that I'm not going to let like meal prep and meal planning and grocery shopping like steal my joy. Like, no, I'm not available for that energy. You know, I have totally. my moments for sure, but as a general like operating rule of uh, about the frequency and the energy that I want moms to operate on, like, you know, you can feel like on top of it. You can feel untouchable. Yeah. Like you can feel like you've got this and bring some, I don't know. And I guess like romanticizing isn't the right word because I don't want to feel like just gloss everything over and pretend it's great. But like, I, I do try and romanticize my mom life. Yeah. And I think that helps me have a lot of fun. I mean, it, there's there's value in that, right? Yeah. I'm thinking of like the baseline and just hearing you talk about it. It's like if your baseline is at zero and you're like, okay, I'm working from this baseline, it's fine. And as long as things are going good and as long as things are stimulating and exciting, then I'm positive, right? Mm-hmm. I can be above baseline. But as soon as it's yeah. like laundry, that's boring. Okay, I'm at zero or I'm <laughs> this laundry sucks and now I'm dipping into the the negative yeah. And when the toddler is crying and throwing things and now you're like way negative because (laughs) you were at zero. And so that's going to bring you Mm. way down. Whereas if your baseline is up at 10 and the toddler might bring you down six, right? But you're still at baseline. You're six. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, (laughs) it's, it's a different way of acting and like navigating the world. And it's not to Mm. say that you never go below zero, but- It just isn't the the everyday, like, little right. struggles that are taking you there. Right. Like, I don't want survival mode or burnout mm-hmm. mode, which is, like, a step even, like, yeah. more desperate than survival mode, to be the mom's baseline. And I don't want moms to accept that for themselves or for their families. I like how you kind of gave that scale, right? Because if I'm, like... I'm out of 10 and something knocks me down to an eight. Like that's still pretty good. And I can still have a really damn good day and a really good outlook at an eight. But if I'm letting myself coast along and run on empty at a zero, like fun is, fun is hard to muster. Really hard, really Really hard. hard. (laughs) Yeah. Really, really hard to muster. I really, it really like kind of, I'm feeling compassionate for myself and I hope anyone mm-hmm. listening who struggles with this, it's like, yeah, yes. of course, if you're running on that kind of lower plane mm-hmm. and it, there's lots of factors for it, it's like, it might, yeah. it makes sense, right? Why it's going to be hard. And so I think knowing that like, it's worth the work and the effort to get that baseline up so that it's yeah. not hard so that we can just have more fun. Yeah, absolutely. And so like, I'm curious, you know, for you, what are some of the things that you feel like are preventing you from having that fun aside from kind of like maybe how you're you're naturally like thought patterned, but mm-hmm. like the day-to-day stuff, like what are your fun roadblocks? I think a lot of times it's the understanding like what would make this fun and how, yeah. like what, is it something that has to happen to make this fun or is it a mm-hmm. mindset thing, right? Is it a yeah. just allowing it to be. I do a lot of like listening to podcasts when I'm doing chores and things like that. And that is like a great way for me to bring Mm -hmm. in some fun. I do a lot of true crime and enjoy it. Sometimes (laughs) it freaks me out, but you know, (laughs) my husband's the same way. He's like smiling, watching true crime. I'm like, you're enjoying that. He's like, yep. I'm like, like, there's a bunch of us out there. (laughs) Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It's your fun boat, right? (laughs) Yeah. But I do think a lot of it is kind of getting stuck in that survival mode sometimes. And, you know, when there's 
when there are a lot of big feelings and when there are a Mm. lot of challenges and, you know, mental health challenges and things like that, it it does bring the baseline down. It brings like, it makes it hard for me to like see past that and see like what could turn this around? How could this be more fun? And so I actually like would love to ask you if you can help us kind of paint a picture for what that can look like. What can it look like to have fun just in the day to day? Yeah, for sure. So I I think of fun as like kind of on a micro and a macro level. And I will say that a couple of the things that allow me to have fun on a macro level are things like my belief about the role of motherhood. Mm -hmm. So I believe that it is a sacred role worthy of respect within my home. I am not the punching bag. I am not the village vending machine. I am not the mom Dorella, right? So I have a very positive self-belief about what it means to be a mom and how important that role is. And so when I'm operating from that place, I come at it with a lot more respect, with compassion, Mm -hmm. and I am able to set more boundaries and take pressure off of myself because I know what my job is and what it is not. So it is not my job to entertain my kids all day. It is not my job to meet their every demand and their every whim. It is not my job to be available at all times for whatever my family needs, right? I am going to exercise. I am going to make plans with friends and I am going to read my book and drink my coffee. Like I'm not super high maintenance. I am a completely hands-on devoted mom, but I will exercise alone. My kids can trickle down at the end, right? And I love to have them see me working out or pick up a weight. So that's important to me. I want them to know that mom's strong and values health. I will drink my coffee while it is hot Mm -hmm. and read my book, right? And I live in the middle of Vermont in the mountains. So it's not like I'm going out to dinner and doing all these fun social stuff all the time. But I will do what I can in my rural environment to maintain like a social calendar and see friends that make plans and, and stuff like that. So that's kind of like some background that I think contributes to it because If you don't have those boundaries or that mindset, it's going to be a lot harder for you to open the door for fun, see those pockets and make it part of your, your daily life. Right. Does that kind of make sense? It totally makes sense. And I I just want to like pull out of there just really quick (laughs) how a lot of that is related to your boundaries with motherhood. It's really like you make sure you have time to do the things that you need to do to be like yeah. acting at your best. So it's not like, oh, I'm just constantly singing to the kids and that's what makes it fun. It's really no. the like foundation you're setting for yeah. your life. Yeah. When I say like moms have more fun, I don't mean it's like because we love to play Legos. Yeah. Like yeah. that's <laughs> – so let me kind of break it down on a, more of a micro level speaking yeah. of like what fun actually looks like now that we know kind of how I'm setting myself up to be open – to fun and to have more fun. Um, I smile all the time. Like I will say like, Ruthie, like, okay, like smile. Like, you know, we can, we're doing the dishes. We're packing the bags. We're cleaning up the toys. We're getting the outfits ready. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Have you smiled at your kids this morning? Like smile, smile. I wink at my kids all the time. I'm always looking for these little like connection points, these little things to just like sprinkle. I don't call them by their names a lot. I'll just be like, Hey, cutie lips, come over here. Hey, like, you know, silly, like little, just little things to kind of let them know that mom's having a good time and I'll blow them kisses. Right. So I'm just sprinkling in these like little fun things to where I could just, you know, not even look at them or I could just say, Hey, Uriah, come over here. Hey, Asa, I'm, you know, but it's just like, it's these little things and it puts their little fun feelers out and it puts my little fun feelers out. So I'm kind of just like dancing through the day a little bit with that kind of stuff. Um, and that actually goes a long way because you put that energy out, you get it back. Your kids are smiling more. You're kind of in this like push and pull, give and take this little dance of fun throughout the day. So I think those little moments actually really mean a lot in terms of like fun with the kids. I get excited about what they get excited about. So if I am going to get on the floor and play with them, which in like my house, it's like if my kids are playing independently, don't say, oh, great tower. Don't go over them. Don't say a thing. Like, let them be. Like, I really value (laughs) independent play within my home. If I'm going to get on the play with them and enter their world, which I do, you know, love to do because I do it when I want to. (laughs) 
<laughs> and not because I feel like I need to. I want to be really present. Tell me more about that. How did you come up with that idea? Whoa, show me again. You know, that kind of stuff. Because I've preserved my energy and I've been cognizant of the energy that I'm putting out, I have the capacity to get in there for a good, you know, five, 10 minutes here and there. So that's really fun. I'm trying to make fun things out of everyday things, right? So I don't think that you know, we as moms like do that enough. If we're going to be here and doing the laundry and packing the snacks and doing the things, how can we make it a little bit more fun and exciting? So it's really more on like a micro level, just valuing that and how you can sprinkle it into your day. Yeah. I think that makes so much sense and it's so clear. And I, I remember when, so I was on your podcast and we recorded a little bit ago Um, And talking about just like, we talked about how to get the kids engaged in cleaning up. And I remember we were talking about like making it entertaining versus like just Mm -hmm. involving them. And if they want to help, cool. And Mm -hmm. that's something that has really stuck with me of like, this isn't, you know, I've always had the belief, like, it's not my job to entertain my kids, but sometimes it feels like, oh no, that's how we have fun. That's how we have fun is Mm -hmm. like, I have to make it so we're having fun. And really like it's like, event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really like they have the fun. And if we can, mm-hmm. I, I like you said something in there about having the capacity, if we can set yeah. our lives up to where we, our cups are full mm-hmm. and we're doing the things we need for ourselves that we can just like join in and engage with them. And they're, I mean, they're kids, they, they know how to have fun. Yeah. They yeah. just do it for naturally. Sure. And so we can lean on them a little bit more in that. And we don't have to be like putting on this show because that's a lot of work. That's a lot of energy and yeah, it's not really helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a really good distinction to make because I am not trying to make like everyday items into like a Disney experience, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes that, but I'm more about the magic and like everyday experiences yeah. than let me put on this whole thing to make it this big like – I'm not like super crafty. I'm not super like party planner extraordinaire. Like, let me bust out all the tricks to make like wow and dazzle you. Like, I just kind of want the fun to just like flow, you know? And so with things like chores, I think what's more fun for me is establishing a consistent rhythm and boundaries and expectations. So I don't have to think so much about those things or expend so much energy, like trying to get them on board. You're done with dinner, you clear your plate. Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. You can go play. Just clear your plate. Yeah. As soon as you clear your plate, you can go like, and I feel like today a lot of mainstream mom messaging and like parenting philosophies disempowers moms because we feel like, oh, we can't say no. Oh, we Mm -hmm. can't have a consequence. We can't like, and I think it's doing everyone a disservice because the kids aren't like learning as many like things about how to be helpful, how to deal with disappointment and how to deal with discomfort, how to do something that you don't want to do, but you have to do because it's helpful and you're part of a team and blah, blah, blah. And the moms are feeling like, well, now everything is piling on me because I have to do this, you know, parenting approach or follow this script where I really feel like the power is being taken away from me. So for me, it's more like empowering me as a mom Mm -hmm. so that I can clear the noise about all of these tasks and have some say over the energy in my home and how things get done so that we can have more fun rather than like making every single moment like are we having fun? We're having, oh, we're not having fun. Like, oh, putting the dishes away isn't fun. Like I got to make this fun. It's more like, how can I bring a fun energy? How can I establish boundaries and consistency so that things run smoothly and we're like rocking and rolling and having a good time? Yeah. I'm just, I keep thinking about, um, and I can't remember what it's called, but like when you smile, how it triggers your body to feel yes. happy. There's it's like yeah. the, some feedback thing, some psychological yeah, yeah, thing I know that we all mean. learned about in yeah. Psych 101. <laughs> right. Exactly. And just like how when you bring the energy and it's not the like over the top excitement, but just the energy of like, I'm enjoying this. And when you smile and you kind of give that cue, how it then is like your kids do that. And then you're Mm -hmm. getting that back from them. And it's like this, this cycle and spiral of like, just enjoying things more because you're getting the feedback from each other 
and how yeah. that like just makes it a, a higher energy in the home. It's not yes. about like forcing big things. It's about creating that pattern that just becomes the natural mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, absolutely. So it does take a little bit of work to like establish those patterns and systems. Um, and that mm-hmm. can be tricky. Like even for me, like I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe I'll feed my family. Usually I'll like serve the kids like food on their plates, right? Like yeah. here's your plate. And, but I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'll do like family style so that I don't like have to keep getting up mm-hmm. right in the middle of my meal. And that'll be a learning curve because then one kid will be like, you took all the strawberries or there's only two <laughs> left for me. And then, right, we'll have to navigate like taking enough for you, but also making sure there's stuff left. But like, how can you kind of hack your way through it so that you have a good system in place where you're available for yeah. fun, you know? Yeah. And it's another th- like thing that, especially when we have these little kids who are changing so much month after month, I mean, what they're able to do is so different with a two-year-old, mm-hmm. right? It's like they can take so much more responsibility of their things as they're getting older. And so we have to be able to like navigate that and understand that and try things and try what boundaries are going to work, what's not. Yeah. And if you're in survival mode, doing that with any amount of like intention is going to be really hard. So it really like all of this kind of comes back to like, you have to set yourself up to have that full cup to, to not be in survival Mm -hmm. mode, to be able to like step back and think intentionally about how I want to set the systems up to make it so that we can enjoy life more. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, I work in a corporate company, a lot of moms are working moms at, you know, or whatever, just in business, you have certain systems that are in place to have things Mm -hmm. run smoothly. You meet about them. You have some strategy behind it. The strategy isn't, oh, let's just default to having one person do all the time and embrace, you know, all of the everything all the time. And the other person is just like pulled in randomly when the person who's in the trenches decides that they're going to like have the gusto to ask for help or something like that. So I'm not waiting for anybody's permission to come and tell me you can have a good day today or uh you can take 10 minutes for yourself today or you are you are you know worthy of feeling sexy or confident or happy like i'm not waiting for anyone's permission to do that that's just yeah. that's unacceptable to me you know what i mean it's not I, something we have to earn no it's not something that you have to earn or something that you have to beg for and trust me i've been in that place like i i do 30 minute workouts i used to text my husband at minute you know 50 halfway there be right up you know like i used yeah and he's like we're fine like we're good you don't need to like give me the play by play on the, the when you'll be up in 2 minutes you know yeah so i i understand cuz it's hard we moms we want to do everything and we feel like we should and but when you kind of unlock that give yourself that gift. Mm-hmm. Um, it really has a ripple effect on, on the whole family, I think. Yeah. I, that's, it really like the things we say and the things we think really do have an impact. They shape our reality. And so it, being mindful yeah. of the, of those kind of mm-hmm. messages that we're perpetuating by yeah. maybe not straight up asking for permission, but yeah, you kind of are right. And it's you kind of are. You're kind of waiting for someone to come to your house and say, oh, you have permission to sit down. I'll I'll do this for you. You have permission to like make that plan with a friend. You, you have permission to, you know, to put off the to-do list for a little bit and take a breather and go rejuvenate, you know? It's like it's our life. For that and we don't even know. Yeah. It. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. So when we're talking about like enjoying life and having Mm -hmm. fun, I always want to just address kind of the toxic positivity because I think that can be problematic in the way we talk about things sometimes, which obviously like that's not that you are very clear. Like it's not all about (laughs) everything's fun. Yeah, for sure. But I want to just kind of like ask you, what are your Mm -hmm. thoughts on navigating periods in life or in the day or in whatever, you know, period of time? That mm-hmm. just are not fun. Yeah. I think that that is, you know, it's definitely important. I never want to come off like it's all sunshine and rainbows. I have moments where I'm, you know, crying or I yell at my kids and I feel bad or the whole gamut, the whole thing. Yeah. Like I have it and I recognize that that's, you know, it's a part of it. It really is. It's a part of anything in life. Um, 
So I do think that being honest about when you're struggling, when you're down in the dumps, when you're just having a grumpy day. Like, I don't know if you have that book, Grumpy Monkey. My kids love it. It's about just like, (laughs) there's this monkey and he's just grumpy and he doesn't know why. And he's just grumpy and he just wants someone to say like, it's okay to be grumpy today. Like, you don't need a reason. And like, here's a hug, you know? And so I do think that we as moms need that community to turn to when Mm -hmm. we're having those moments. We need a partner that we can trust who's not going to judge us. We need that good group of girlfriends that we can turn to and say like having a hard mom day or the kids are driving me crazy or like I really need a vacation. Like we need that outlet. So normally I would say that like in sort of like an evenly weighted environment, I would say that, you know, be wary of toxic positivity. My thing with it is, to be honest, I think we've gone too far the other way, but Mm -hmm. that's just me. Maybe what I'm getting fed on social media is more negative, toxic negativity about moms. So I think that like having some pull in the other direction is needed right now. Um, that's, that's my experience with what I see in here on, on kind of like the mainstream mom culture. But I do think it is so important that we moms, you know, in the 1950s or so, we had some of the things that I think are important now. Like moms were kind of getting ready and like dressing cute and they were like hanging out with other moms and letting their kids just play. You know, moms probably didn't feel the pressure to, in a, you know, a lot of the ways that we still do. They weren't trying to navigate career and other like, but at the same time, it was like, put on a good face, put your makeup on, you know? So I'm not saying Mm -hmm. we need to go back there. I I do value those heart to hearts, acknowledging the tough parts as well. So I think it's like being mindful of where, where are you at right now? And what do you need? Do you need a friend to say like, yeah, toddlers are rough. Or do you need a friend to say like, you know what? Pour yourself a glass of water, go for a walk. Like it's all going to be fine. Like depending on the mood and what's going on, you might need something different. But I think like just being aware, aware of that and aware of the kind of messages you're taking in and the the motherhood influences that you're surrounding yourself is really key. Yeah. It's, it's all coming back to, to kind of society and what we're kind of seeing and what we're taking in. And you said something there, like about what you're seeing on social media may not be what someone else is seeing on social media. And I think that is such a key point is that a lot of what we, the messaging we get and particularly Mm -hmm. about motherhood, I think that, yeah, that is, it's a really big area of like Mm -hmm. just conversation. And there's a lot of content out there about motherhood and knowing that you're probably seeing something different than what someone else is seeing and they're seeing something Mm -hmm. different than what someone else is seeing and that it's all informing us and informing our reality. It's so important to understand that and to know that, like, just be aware of what you're taking in, Mm -hmm. right? It's not necessarily like, oh, you have to get off social media because you can't see these things, but it's knowing that, okay, this is informing my reality. And so I need to be mindful that like, am I going to let this in or am mm-hmm. I not? And we, yeah, we definitely, if we're just kind of mindlessly scrolling, mm-hmm. <laughs> that can be yeah. something that we don't realize is actually impacting mm-hmm. like how we're able to show up and how we're communicating with others and things like that. Right. And I think too, like knowing what's important to you as a mom mm-hmm. and trying to like tune out the rest. So for me, like, I think different things make us cringe differently, right? Like, so for me, if I see like a mom and her kids are in like perfect matching outfits and there's bows in the hair and the, like, they're so put together and they've got the perfect pose. I don't look at that and see like, oh gosh, like um, my, uh, you know, I can't even get my kids like to wear a clean shirt. Like Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean anything to me. Totally. So I'm not putting pressure on myself to be that. Yeah. But if that does mean something to you and you want to be that type of family, then you're going to spiral right into these negative thoughts. So it's about like knowing your value system, what's important to you as a mom. To me, it's more important that my my kid went to school with his shirt on backwards today. So do you Mm -hmm. care your shirt's on backwards? He said, no. I said, I don't either. Have a great day. You know what I mean? So (laughs) like, yeah. So I think like realizing what's important to you and and focusing on that and being really like strong in who you are and Mm -hmm. what your value system as a mom and as a family is, you're going to be less susceptible 
to either toxic positivity or toxic negativity. If you're the kind of mom who wants to say like, F these kids, they're driving me up a wall, like get me some wine, like that's your prerogative. And if you're the kind of mom who wants to say like, you know, hashtag love my kids always, like hashtag motherhood is amazing and wear the perfect clothes, like great. But we each as moms have to like, kind of reflect and say, what's important to us? What is fun to me? Is fun getting all dressed up for a family picture or is fun just putting on some like clothes and like going and stomping in puddles? Like mm-hmm. it, it really just depends. There's so many different layers and so many different variations of what fun can be for moms. And so I think having that established is going to set you up for success. <laughs> totally. Well, and and being really intentional to sit down and be like, what is it that I value? Because if you don't, then you're going to think you value everything. Yeah. And seeing the kids in the matching clothes, yeah. even if you don't actually care, if you're not aware that you don't actually care, you're not right. like you haven't brought the awareness to that. It still can make you feel yeah. like crap. Like, oh, I'm not doing that. And apparently that's what moms do. And it's like, yeah. wait, I actually don't care about that. And my kids have like fun clothes that they like to wear and like (laughs) the Mickey Mouse shirts and whatever. It's like, oh, actually, I value that more. So Mm -hmm. why would I take this in and make it mean something about me? Because I I don't care. So yeah, exactly. Like the intricate crafts, I'm taking right off my plate. I'm not going to spend my time setting up the the craft. I would rather get messy. But some moms, the idea of like getting messy and just being like, let's go play in the dirt. Like, I'm like, they don't want to deal. They would rather like cut the shapes and get the glue out and the pom-poms. That makes me, no, that makes me want to lose my mind, right? So you have to know what your idea of fun could look like and like mm-hmm. kind of own it. And if you're having fun, your kids are going to have fun. Yeah. You know? It's not too hard to get them to have fun. <laughs> no, it's really not. Like, yeah. it's, it's really They'll follow not. the lead. Yeah. So like for you, what are some of like – when you think about your word for the year, like fun, like I'm curious when you like envision yourself having fun, like in motherhood or in just, you know, womanhood in life, like what does that feel like or look like to you? What are some of those things that you're like striving for? You know, one of the big ones, because it can be so stressful, like going anywhere. So we live really close to the beach and like we have a lot of mm-hmm. like fun things around us to do that are just yeah. easy, yeah. but getting the five-year-old and the almost three-year-old there and then also like getting them back into the car and making sure they're not like (laughs) running off and all of that like I don't usually enjoy it and then it makes it so that we don't do it and then I feel guilty because we're just home and you know all these things it's like a ripple effect (laughs) so I really want to that's like a huge goal for me is to be able to like go do those things Mm -hmm. and figure out like kind of the systems and boundaries and structures that are going to make it so that not worried about all the other crap and can actually just go enjoy because it's once you're enjoying the thing once you're like doing Mm -hmm. it and you're out digging in the sand like that's fun yeah but if it's so stressful getting there or you don't get there right then that's that's hard a bit of a bummer but I love everything you've said about like just bringing it into the house because you know me and my kids we have that like fun banter and we're always like throwing up the I love you in sign language and doing things like that and so I just I think even taking this conversation and knowing like a lot of the little things Mm -hmm. that you've said I'm like we do that and so it's again the intention and the like acknowledgement and the like letting that be the fun is Mm -hmm. important and it's not yeah. something I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Recognizing those moments yeah. Yeah. as being fun. Letting the fun sink in, yeah. I think, is important. And and yeah, I think, you know, with kids and cars and holding hands and parking lot, like putting in the work to just like establish those systems. Like mm-hmm. I'll even have meetings like, okay, here's what we're going to do. If, you know, we're going to get in the car, we're going to do this. We're going to all hold hands to the thing. If you run off, I might, we might not be able to come back because it's really important that we all stick together and stay safe. Like just r- drilling that, drilling that, drilling that. And then you get into a rhythm and it, it it's like anything, like the more reps you get in, the easier it gets. The easier it is. Yeah. So I'm like manifesting fun beach trips for you guys where everyone stays <laughs> together. And- I'll have to share about it and <laughs> like we're, yeah. it's going to happen. And also the kids are getting yeah, older totally. too. Like it's, it's getting to be where like my five-year-old yeah. is 
he gets it. He understands yeah. the turning a bit component. of a corner. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that is part of it too. And it's it's mm-hmm. acknowledging that like we're getting there, and it's like it's awesome. Yeah. And we'll keep doing it. We'll keep doing the thing. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that sounds good. I love that. Yeah. For you. <laughs> oh, I love this. I'm like just so excited about this conversation. As we wrap up, I really feel it is super important to talk about self care. And I do mm-hmm. with every guest that I have just because I'm mm-hmm. all about like normalizing moms taking care of themselves and making that yes. like less of a like thing. <laughs> it's just yeah. normal. So mm-hmm. I would love to know personally, how do you take care of yourself? And do you have any advice for moms to make sure that they are taking care of themselves? Yeah, for sure. So some of the stuff that I mentioned earlier about like setting boundaries and how I view my role as motherhood lends itself really well to to taking that self-care. So there are a few things that I do on a day-to-day to take care of myself and kind of honor my own needs. The first is that I wake up with a positive thought. So most mornings I'm waking up to the sound of one of my kids like calling for me. I used to set an alarm to try and get up before them, but my youngest son, I'm telling you, he has a sixth sense. Anytime I set the alarm, like let's say I set it for 530, he would get up at 520. So if I don't set alarm, he sleeps in. <laughs> so I just gave that up for a little bit. This is just not the season, <laughs> I, season I'm in. Um, But so most mornings I'm waking up like to my kids, I have a positive thought. I think about like my intention for the day and what I'm grateful for. And then I'm like on it, you know? So I think for me, self-care is a lot like minding, being very cognizant and intentional about my thoughts. My coffee is like a ritual for me. So I'm bringing like the luxury, I'm bringing the ritual to it. I'm not like waking up and like sucking it down, right? Like Either my husband will make it for me or I'll make it for me. And my kids know that like mommy's drinking her coffee. You know, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to drink my coffee and sure I'll watch you play, but I'm also going to read my book or I'm going to put my face mask. Like, well, I don't actually put like a face mask on in front of them because it terrifies them, but I'm going to put like my <laughs> lipstick on or, or whatever. Um, So I really kind of have this like ritualistic kind of treat mentality about my coffee. I do I've been prioritizing skincare. So no matter how tired I am or whatever, I will spend probably 10 minutes doing my skincare at the end of the day, watching my face, putting some serum on, doing a little gua sha. Um, I'll do that while I like read a book in bed. So like kind of little rhythms and rituals throughout the day. I also really prioritize the food that I'm eating and exercise. So I take care of my body through proper nutrition and through movement. So I'm usually doing weights or some intervals for at least 30 minutes. I just started this hot Pilates class that I really like. It's freezing ass cold here in Vermont. I need to sweat. It gets me, I work from home. My, I have a little home gym at home. It gets me out of the house. It gets me seeing other women, meeting some new faces And it's good because a couple mornings a week, you know, my husband takes over and like an afternoon of the week, he takes over. So that's been like a good dynamic because I work, you know, at home and he's in the army. So he has a more kind of demanding out of the home schedule, but to kind of be like, actually, you can handle the mornings. Like you got it. I'll I'll be back after my class. Like that's been really good. So I prioritize nutrition and I prioritize exercise and I really try, and this helps me a lot, to find something to look forward to each day, Mm -hmm. like no matter how small or maybe it's something bigger on the calendar, like a vacation or something like that. I'm like, okay, what am I looking forward to today? So yeah, those are the ones that come come to mind. There's a few things in there that you said that I'm like, oh my God, I do that too. I'm about like iced coffee, so which makes it really oh, easy because yeah. I can sip it all morning and it stays iced. I can yes. pour more ice in there. Um, yeah. But I yeah, I don't have any right now because I they've all broken. But I use glass straws. <laughs> and it's like yes. for some reason just like elevates the experience a little bit of like mm-hmm. I made my espresso, put it over ice, added my yeah. creamer, half and half or whatever yeah. it is drinking it out of a glass straw and it just Mm -hmm. feels good even if I'm doing it while I'm multitasking getting ready and rushing out the door it just feels good yeah and then 
I just never really had a skincare routine. I washed my face in the shower because I just, I never, my skin was yeah. always in the last You do have months, great skin. It's like glowy. Well, because I've been putting on, um, I don't even know, some serum in the morning and then I yeah. like put on a, something else. Just I have all this stuff and I, it's like, I've asked yeah. my family, like, what do you use? And I got it and I just do it before my makeup yeah. every morning. And yeah. It's been so nice. I also have a little like mini version at night and mm-hmm. making sure I at least take my makeup off before I go to bed and things like <laughs> yeah. that. It's like it doesn't have to be these mm-hmm. huge no things, but just knowing like it feels so good for me to like I do my little skincare routine and it's right? it's new and I'm still learning and it doesn't happen every day, but yeah. It feels good to take care of yourself in that way and just it's it doesn't add much. No, it plate. really doesn't. It's like I, I'm all about like what you said, like adding a little luxury, like mm-hmm. adding a little pleasure, like instead of just like scrubbing your face and, you know, washing it off, like, can you like massage your face a little bit? Can you like, you know, put on some like calming music in the background and or or whatever it is to just yeah. bring that kind of joy and like treat yourself a little bit, treat yourself like you're sacred. Like, you know, I read a lot and mothers in like a lot of countries you know, they're anointing them with oil after the birth and they're, you know, honoring them with this and that. And we've kind of taken the, like that, those special rituals out of our day. We've kind of like outsourced a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, we don't need it. We're too busy or we don't even know that those I'm rituals just a mom. Exist. I'm just a mom, you know, and it's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I want to treat myself really well. I want to show up yeah. really well. And, you know, a lot of those things we want for our kids too. So I try and keep that in mind, you know, yeah. as I'm how I'm going about my day. And how I'm speaking to myself and how I'm helping others learn how to treat me. It's like, I want my boys to advocate for themselves and enjoy their day and have a positive yeah. outlook and, and all that stuff. So we're modeling a lot for them and it informs a lot of like how they then go and navigate the world. So it's yeah important things that are important for us and the quality of life that we have, but there's also so many more like benefits Mm. to prioritizing ourselves and prioritizing our joy. Yeah, definitely. When we take care of ourselves, which we are so worthy of, we really can show up with more fun, a more fun spirit and energy. And like, I think, you know, let alone like our kids, like my husband, like I want to have a good time so that like for my marriage too, you know, Mm -hmm. I want a marriage to be strong. I want it to be interesting. I want it to be fun. I want it to be lively. I want us to feel connected. And, you know, that's another thing that I keep in mind as I think about like how I want to show up and how I want to take care of myself too. So Ruthie, where can listeners find you? What should they keep an eye out for? Oh my gosh. Thanks so much for asking. So you can listen to my podcast, the moms have more fun podcast and go do it. (laughs) (laughs) And you will be on there. And our episode was really, really good. We had a great conversation. Um, so I chat with like, just, you know, the moms next door about like, hey, what's motherhood like for you? Like, how's it going over there? What are you up to? You know, tell me about your tell me about your life. I'm really nosy like that. So I like to get kind of an inside peek into mom's daily lives. But I also have brought on some, you know, experts in certain fields, you know, as they pertain to motherhood. I'm going to be bringing my husband on the show a little bit and he's always a good time. We're like yin and yang. It's so funny. Um, and I talk about fitness and nutrition as well, since that's so near and dear to my heart. So Yeah, we have a really good time over there. And uh, I also have a line for moms of some like positive motherhood shirts, hats, jean jackets at Moms Have More Fun. So I'll link that stuff for you. And um, yeah, it would be great. I love to connect with mommies online. Amazing. Yeah, definitely go check out the podcast and love all of that. So good. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for just helping me as I am navigating this year of fun. I really feel like 2024, there's going to be some, there's going to be lots of fun. (laughs) Yeah. There's so much fun to be had. I love that for you. Thank you for like kind of sharing your experience with me and for even, you know, wanting to dive into the topic of fun and shed some light on that. So I'm like just envisioning lots of fun activities for you this year. Just a fun, fun vibes. (laughs) Same wholeheartedly. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in. I'm really excited you're here and sharing in this conversation with me. You are worthy mama. 